I was born in Harangua and uh, lived there and grew up, uh, which is in the northwest part of the city of Tuani. I then also went to school, pre-primary and high school, in Magao village, uh, not too far from there. One day in preschool, they took us over to the primary school to go to the reading center. It wasn't any ordinary reading center. It was actually an IBM reading and writing center. What does this mean? This was the first time I actually touched a computer. And in touching uh, that computer, I would come back to it uh, a few years later, like a year later, as a preschool student, and got to use that reading and writing center. What happened is that this machine allowed you uh, to put in some input, it would give you some instructions, and then you would get some output or feedback personalizing your learning. This was very fascinating to me because it got you to think, what actually can we do with these types of machines? Later on in high school, then I got to really start thinking about, hey, how then can you actually teach these machines to actually learn by themselves using data? And this is something that's shaped me for the rest of uh, my life. Right? So what do I do? I really uh, focus on what can we learn about ourselves and our languages using data and AI. And I'm going to take you through this journey and really the ideas I want to share with you through a couple of stories. So the first story, I was starting my PhD. I just moved to the United States. I became very homesick in my first semester. And there was one time where I think uh, watching some shows where they said, hey, if we spent as much time, like, you know, just a fraction of as much time as we do watching TV, instead editing Wikipedia, Wikipedia would be much, much better. So that's what I ended up doing at, uh, late at night, um, going around, finding all these Wikipedia pages of the townships around Tswani. And one of the things I identified very quickly was for a lot of the townships, so that's Mabupane, it's Soshangube, Mamilodi, they had like two, three sentences written about them. Just imagine how many people live there, but they all just get summarized into that, while other places have many, many pages that you can get on there. So I started editing, adding structure, finding information, putting together these Wikipedia articles, right? So one of the things to get is that Wikipedia doesn't represent everything, so it's actually something in, in some ways. I came back to South Africa in June 2010 to do three things. One was get married, two, watch the World Cup, some World Cup games, and then three, to visit the Eski Ampatele Library, which is the main library of the city of Tuani. So I go to the Eski Ampatele Library, uh, go over to the librarian, ask them, hey, I'm looking for information of these townships around the city of Tuani. Can I get some, like, you know, some references? The librarian goes away, comes back a while later, and then hands me back all the Wikipedia articles I had just been editing <laughs> for the last eight months. <laughs> right? So there's a number of lessons here that we can learn. So one, small actions can actually have big impact. Right? I didn't take, I, like, you know, wasn't really planning on this. Second is that for a lot of AI tools, Wikipedia acts actually as ground knowledge, right? So there's a lot of tools that then go in, uh, go through Wikipedia, and then use that as ground knowledge to then suggest things. So just imagine now, for all these places, Amanskral, Mamilodi, Harangua, it almost like they didn't exist before, right? So if you're interacting with those systems, they wouldn't give you much information. But now, if you go there and you will see now there's multiple pages of information that's on there, and it can actually be built on top of but it's not something that just happens automatically. We have to actually get uh, that done. We need to understand that AI has been with us. It's not something that is new. If you use the internet, uh, if you use any apps and all those things, they all do this lots of automated decision making that's inside there. And you've been doing this for decades. You, it's just something that's behind. But then, from my story, you should ask yourself, like, really, what kind of information is are inside these systems? These types of systems can be used to connect us and build and really improve our worlds, but at the same time, they can be very scary and be used to drive hate, right? And this is where my second story comes in. So again, go back to my PhD. Now I'm more seasoned <laughs> as a PhD student, and there was some time I got to work on graph mining. So what this is, is you're interested in, for example, on Twitter, there's a show, there was a show called Intersections, which was an edutainment show about HIV and AIDS, and really looking at the behavior of people on the series. 
So what you want to do is look at how people send messages to each other. And from this, you can then learn things like, oh, who's actually influential? The show was very good at actually driving debate during the broadcast. And people, some people would just watch the show by just watching Twitter and then interact. So one of the things that you might want to do in this situation is by learning who's actually influential, then see how you can work with them to actually spread your message, in this case, by changing behavior and educating people about HIV and AIDS and what kind of things like, you know, could be better to do uh, as an individual on that. At the same time, these same types of modeling can actually be used to drive hate. We had a situation here in South Africa where a PR firm, Bell Pottinger, used these tools to then spread misinformation and run a disinformation campaign during the, like, you know, the latter days of the previous administration in terms of the presidency, right? This was actually created to divide the ruling party and then also divide and confuse households. Were you team WMC or team REIT? This is something that is still going on today, right? That you can use these systems, they automatically try to amplify things, and then somebody else comes and then uses them actually for nefarious means. So we need to then understand this, that if we don't have control or we don't understand what is going on, really, AI just becomes some of us. It doesn't represent our ideals, our values, and what the things that we want in our societies uh, within them. As I said at the beginning, I work on language, especially African languages, and it's very important to take some of these AI tools and see what we can learn about ourselves and our languages within there. So this takes me to my th third story, right? So, how then has language evolved on the African continent is something I'm very interested in, right? And how also does South Africa actually affect the rest of the continent? So here, uh, you see somebody uh, complaining about South Africans. We have this knack of not speaking one language. We never finish our sentences in one language, right? <laughs> Even on Twitter, this happens. Uh, to the point uh, that there's this word, batung. It's a Setswana word. And if you use it as an exclamation or a surprise, and I was very interested in it because I started seeing it being used in Nigeria and Twitter and Kenyan Twitter and didn't understand what was going on. Do you even know that South Africa is called the Batung Nation on Twitter? <laughs> That's what other African, like other African countries call us. And this is very interesting for us to study because it's actually evolving language that's shaping other people. Here's somebody from, uh, from Kenya who now has said how the hair vocabulary has changed because of the, uh, the internet, and now she uses Batung regularly. All right, so we can use AI in the same way to now understand how this movement has actually happened. Here's somebody else from Nigeria mixing Batung with Nigerian pigeon. All right, and again, how did this happen? But it's something worth understanding. It's something worth knowing and studying because it tells us more about ourselves, how we interact, how we evolve culture on the other way. And it also works for us to really break our own colonial legacies. Even though some people are still going to go and try and fight the South Africans. <laughs> I still don't think that they'll win on that. Representation matters in building these AI systems. And as such, if we don't build in what we want, then they don't represent us. So in some of this in the last part is how do we represent language in itself? And again, it goes back to that data. You don't have a lot of data for many, many languages. So we were working in our lab on Setswana uh, for a while, looking at semantics, how words are related to each other. And one of the things we identified was this challenge that for some of the models, uh, a lot of them uh, a few years ago were built on using um, scraping Wikipedia, for example couldn't connect in Setswana the connection between the moon and the stars, right? They have any bodies astronomy on the run. And if you just took it at face value, you would tell the story that Botswana people don't know anything about astronomy. But that's not true at all, right? <laughs> These concepts have been with us for eons, right? And why if these systems are? It's because there's no data, and we need to improve the data on there. Here it is, here's Setswana the words of the different stars, and um, Setswana is my mother's language, and at the same time, here are the words in Shitsonga, which is my father's language. And there's lots of idioms and stories and oral traditions that have to do with their heavenly bodies on them. 
So it might look that we don't have if you just use the model as it is, but if you build the model the correct way, it gets to represent us, right? Instead of just being uh, the status quo that then brings in all these legacies that we have from the past. Right? So AI really can be all of us. And for it to be all of us, we need to make sure that we establish deep African AI research routes. We need people studying these things, building these systems, and checking how far they can get in really representing us. Right? Thank you. Oops. Hello. <laughs>